We bring you the news from NHK World Radio Japan at 8 p.m. Japan time on Sunday, July 9th. I'm Hirokazu Sakamaki. And I'm Yuka Matsumoto. In our top stories, a UNESCO committee has decided to register a group of ancient monuments in Japan as a World Heritage Site. North Korea has reacted sharply after the United States flew bombers over the Korean Peninsula. And Mongolian voters have elected a former martial arts champion as their new president. Now the news in detail. A UNESCO committee has decided to register a group of ancient monuments in Japan as a World Heritage Site. The sacred island of Okinoshima and seven associated sites in the Munakata region of Fukuoka Prefecture, Western Japan, have been chosen for the World Heritage List. Okinoshima features ritual sites and ornaments used between the 4th and 9th centuries to pray for safe voyages between Japan and other parts of East Asia. U.S. President Donald Trump has tweeted that the G20 summit was a success, but his unwillingness to go along with the Paris Climate Accord and other issues has seemingly left the United States more isolated. Leaders from the group of 20 major economies issued a declaration after wrapping up their meeting in Hamburg, Germany, on Saturday. In it, the leaders said they recognized the role of legitimate trade defense instruments, This is an apparent concession to U.S. trade policy. Every leader except Trump stood by the Paris Climate Accord. A paragraph was added to the declaration noting the U.S. withdrawal from the pact. Trump left Germany without holding a news conference. Instead, he tweeted that the summit was a wonderful success and carried out beautifully by German Chancellor Angela Merkel. But Merkel was apparently disappointed by Trump's refusal to adopt the measures to fight global warming. French President Emmanuel Macron and British Prime Minister Theresa May also indicated they will try to persuade Trump to return to the climate agreement. Iraqi forces are close to regaining full control of the northern city of Mosul. They have driven Islamic State militants into a small patch of the old city. Iraqi military officials say they are very close to declaring victory. On Saturday, troops were seen holding up their guns and dancing to celebrate. A news agency linked to the militants says they have vowed to fight to the death. They seized the second largest city in Iraq three years ago. The Iraqi forces announced on Sunday that they had shot dead 30 militants, They said many militants tried to flee across the Tigris River after being surrounded. The Iraqi troops had to advance cautiously, as the militants are using many civilians as human shields and took advantage of the city's complicated terrain to carry out sniping and suicide bombings. With the militants confined to a small area of Mosul, there are growing expectations that the operation to retake the city will soon be completed after more than eight months. North Korea has reacted sharply after the United States flew bombers over the Korean Peninsula. The U.S. military sent two B-2-B-1 bombers on Saturday in response to Pyongyang's announcement that it had successfully launched an intercontinental ballistic missile. The aircraft carried out a bombing drill at a training site in South Korea. The Korean Workers' Party newspaper Rodon Shimun ran a commentary on Sunday, accusing the U.S. of a dangerous act by trying to ignite the fuse of a nuclear war on the Korean peninsula. The paper also defended Pyongyang's ICBM development, saying it is justified in increasing its nuclear capabilities as a means to counter U.S. provocations. The paper also criticized South Korean President Moon Jae-in over his first meeting with U.S. President Donald Trump. The article said, It is deceptive for Moon to talk about dialogue with North Korea while working with the U.S. to oppress the North.
You are listening to NHK World Radio Japan from Tokyo. The humanitarian situation in South Sudan is worsening six years after the country's independence as fighting continues between government and opposition forces. South Sudan gained independence from Sudan on July 9, 2011, after a long civil war that left as many as two million people dead. Armed conflict began in 2013. In July last year, large scale fighting broke out in the capital, Juba. Violent clashes continue in different parts of the country after Japanese ground self defense force personnel pulled out in May after ending Japan's UN peacekeeping mission. The UN Children's Agency UNICEF said in a statement on Saturday that at least 2,500 children have been killed or injured since the conflict began. It warned that children are bearing the brunt of the violence. Refugees are flowing out of South Sudan. Killings of civilians, sexual violence against women, and looting of food continue, especially in the south of the country. Mongolian voters have elected a former martial arts champion as their new president. Official results released on Sunday show Hautama Batuga from the opposition Democratic Party won 50.6% of the vote, while Mie Gombo Inkbolt of the governing Mongolian People's Party had 41.2%. The runoff election was held on Friday after none of three candidates won a majority in the first round in June. Batuga pledged to increase state control over the development of natural resources as well as boosting economic growth by promoting exports. Mongolia's economy is stagnant due to a fall in natural resource prices. And as say Batuga's patriotic slogan, Mongolia will triumph. Attractive younger voters. The Mongolian People's Party will continue to run the government as it won more than 80% of the parliamentary seats in last year's general election. Analysts say the latest results suggest growing public discontent with the government. The Japanese government plans to use facial recognition technology at airports to admit Japanese passport holders returning home. Officials plan to install unmanned immigration gates at Tokyo's Haneda Airport in October. The system identifies the traveler by comparing the passport photograph and the image taken at the immigration gate. Unmanned immigration control gates are already in use for Japanese who have pre registered their fingerprints, but the new system does not require pre registration. The Justice Ministry plans to introduce the facial recognition system at three more airports by the end of March 2019. Officials hope it will enable immigration officers to handle the growing number of foreign visitors. And that was the news from NHK World Radio Japan in Tokyo. I'm Hirokazu Sakamaki. And I'm Yuka Matsumoto. This is NHK World Radio Japan.